I remember we were traveling once by flight and they were calling out for a doctor. She had fainted in the um, bathroom. And so you were the only ones who, you know, were there on the flight and then you took over. The airline was shaking and so trying to get an IV into her was yeah, the hardest thing. Tough. In this lady's case, I put an IV in, I ran it wide open, we were able to get back some pressure. When you have a 747 full of fuel, it's your first pregnancy and you're over 36 weeks, most doctors would not recommend flying. Now, the other things which you worry about are people who have gone diving. I can tell you uh, a plane is like the last place you wanna have a psychotic break. Hey guys. Hi guys. Today we're gonna be talking about in-flight medical emergencies. Oh. The kind of things where they call for the doctor. So join us, it's gonna be very interesting. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Nene, a US trained cardiac, thoracic, and vascular surgeon, and a general surgeon. As a healthcare innovator and a health tech innovator, I wanna empower you to your best health ever. On this channel, we will share evidence-based medicine from all of us to you through our experiences and training about health and healthcare. The goal is to help you make informed decisions about your own health as well as that of your loved ones. We're here for you, so don't hesitate to reach out. You know, uh, I had an experience once. We were flying, me and Ryan were flying. Uh, and there was this patient on, on the flight. Suddenly went into, um, you know, um, he started becoming delirious and he just, just went wild. And we had to kind of divert the flight and land in uh, Iceland and, you know, the whole... It was, it was a horrible, it was a nightmare flight. But I felt so bad for that person because he was all alone. He was traveling alone and he was diabetic. And what he did was, instead of carrying his, you know, um, medi medications on the flight, he put it in his check-in bag. Wow. And now his, um, his uh, sugar had shot to 800 and, uh, you know, he was delirious. He didn't know where he was and so we had to land. So what would you say to people who are diabetic or people who are traveling with kids? And I think they should be very particular that when they're traveling, make sure that they pack all their medications on in the over um, in the hand luggage, not in the check-in bag. Right? That's a great point. So always, uh, or if you're allergic to something and you need your EpiPen or whatever the medications are, make sure you have it with you. Um, if you, on the flight, uh, if you are, uh, you, if you have diarrhea or something, you're on antibiotics. Make sure you have your course of antibiotic on on flight. Um, also have. You know, witnessed, even I've traveled with my kids when they were infants, and um, they used to start crying when the air, aircraft is taking off, or they're crying when it's landing. So it's the air pressure, um, which makes their ears hurt. And um, I would suggest to them that they should feed the babies, you know, while taking off and while landing. Make sure that you plan their feeds accordingly when you know you're going to travel, so that when he's on the flight about to take off, he's hungry. Because when they are swallowing, I don't know how that works, you will be able to tell better. But when they are swallowing, it helps to clear your eustachian tube or whatever the... So, uh, so what happens is that as the air expands and mm -hmm. your altitude changes, yeah. the air pressure in closed spaces, like your sinuses and your ears, expands, or rather, not the air pressure, the air, right. air pressure goes down, but the air expands, and that's when you get the pain. Right. Um, so and that's when the kids cry the most, right? Yes. While landing yes, or take yes. off. And, and so there's a couple of take homes on this. The first is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I've said it again and again and again. If you have a known chronic illness, make sure that you've covered your bases. Make sure that the doctor has cleared you to fly. And, you know, I know that cancellation charges can add up, particularly after COVID, they got a little you know, waxed about this because everyone and their brother was canceling. Yeah. Now they are like charging everyone and not giving any cancellations. Right. But the point is that it's much better to be, well, it's better to be not sick at all, but if you have to be sick, it's much more manageable at home than on a plane and certainly not on vacation. The second thing is there's some little things you can do. The humidity in the air and the air pressure in the air at six to 8,000 feet on an airplane is less. As a result of that, with the humidity, you're gonna get dry eyes, 
a dry throat. Yeah, I always get that. My nose becomes so dry that it starts burning after a while. And so uh, what do you do for that? Like you carry a little so, spray? So I would say saline saline hydrating spray. is a great idea. Lo um, drink lots of water. Using uh, nasal sprays also helps, particularly if you're prone to bloody noses and things like mm. that, it can help. The other thing is bring some re-wetting drops for your eyes, particularly if it's a long flight, will really help you from having redness and irritation and whatnot. Um, the second thing is, uh, as you said, if you have chewing gum for adults, yeah. or if you have a baby's bottle or even some lollipops, work lollipops, very well. exactly. For kids who are a little older, you can I mean, they will always take a lollipop, right? Even if they don't want to a lollipop. Yeah. So while taking off and landing, always give them something either to chew on or lollipop. You know, and that, also now there's works one thing well. we talked about that most physicians would not recommend a child under 48 hours to be flying. Yes. And similarly with a woman who's just given birth, you shouldn't be flying. Some of this is common sense, and nor would they want to because they won't be comfortable. Sometimes they have to get home, though. Um, now, the other thing we haven't talked about is other things you have to do on a plane. One is hydration, the second, and hydration in all forms, water, uh, eye drops, uh, nasal um, sprays. But the other one is that the incidence of something we call deep vein thrombosis or clots yeah. can go up. And there was one study which showed that up to 10% of people on flights greater than four hours have clots form. Most of the time, they're not uh, harmful in that they'll break down automatically and not go to the lungs. Mm -hmm. But in a small subset of cases, particularly in patients who are at high risk from uh, hypercoagulability or increased clotting, or if they've had injuries to their vessels, or if they have underlying medical problems, they can go on to get pulmonary emboli. So in those cases, if you are at risk, you need to talk to a doctor before you go, and you may need to be on uh, aspirin, or even in the worst cases, low molecular weight heparin, heparin which protects against uh, clots forming. But in other people's cases, what I would say would be beneficial is that every hour to three hours, you need to be getting up and walking. And that's not always easy. And honestly, the type of uh, yoga poses you have to strike when you're sitting in, in uh, some parts of the plane are <laughs> Like ridiculous. the window seat when you have to get up and you have to make everybody else get up. But don't feel bad about that because uh, it's finally your health. And uh, it's very important that you walk around, especially if you are taking a very long flight. Uh, secondly, you can do some movements like arm movements, your leg movements, to make sure that your you know, body is moving all the time. Because uh, when you're, you're just sitting uh, for three hours, four hours, five hours, it's not really good for you. And um, it would be a great idea to walk around or um, you know, just do those little exercises they recommend on the airplane. So here's another pro tip. In the air, because you're sedentary sitting in one position, many people tend to swell. And I can tell you from oh, personal yeah. experience, we were on a flight together and a lady had her rings on and one of her rings on her finger was so tight and her finger swelled up and it turned blue and they called for a medical practitioner and I had to basically use the tin snips from the food trays to cut this ring off. Otherwise her finger would have basically uh, lost had risk of yeah, being yeah. lost and gangrenous. Um, so, so that's also a good idea for the ladies. Like once you're on the flight, just take all of your rings off your jewelry and, and all, and and even men, yeah, uh, and keep it, you know, in your purse. Or and also wear things. loose clothing, yeah. and you know, in the case of shoes and all that, don't wear really, really tight heels and all that because there is a tendency for your legs to swell up, yeah, and it becomes very uncomfortable. You can always change once you get near to the landing. But the point is, once you get on, have a pair of sweats or other things that you can get comfortable in. Well, I think we have more or less, you know, covered everything um, that can happen on a flight and does happen to people. Uh, I've been a witness and, um, you know, it's great to, you know, uh, take all the precautions, then be on the flight and be in trouble. So in conclusion, in-flight medical emergencies do happen at a significant rate. And you're safe because they have good medical kits in most cases and hopefully volunteers like me who are willing to help out, but you also have a ground system as well. 
the main thing is, as she sa stated, if you know you're at risk, don't fly. And then the second thing is, if you do get into trouble, identify it and ask for help early. And the third thing is, if you're another passenger or another volunteer on the flight, be cool. Because, listen, it may happen to you someday, and you need to help out in whichever way you can so that everyone gets through together. And that way you can get to wherever you need to go safely. Yeah, and uh, I remember um, the, the thing that I was talking about, the patient who had diabetes, and we had to... Uh, land in Iceland and all our plans went haywire because we had to come back to LA and then fly the next day and so it was a mess and everybody was like complaining and cribbing and you know uh, and Ryan turned to me and says mom we are better off I said why he says imagine the poor guy uh, who has been taken and we have landed in Iceland he doesn't know anyone out there he doesn't even know what language is spoken there and he's going to you know wake up in this hospital not knowing where he is so, I mean, we are better off than him, so let's pray for the poor guy. And I think that's the attitude everybody should have, that things happen, but you have to be patient uh, as a traveler and you have to be compassionate to others. I mean, look at the bright side. It's better than being on horseback, traveling for months, getting to where you're oh, going. Oh, yeah, to. you bet. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, and thanks for joining us. As always, if you've liked it, hit the like button, subscribe so you can see more of our uh, videos. and. Remember to share this with everyone, and don't forget to leave the comments in the section below so that we know if we're on track and if you have questions. Lastly, as always, <clears throat> I've left great uh, articles and, and um, links for you from where we've gotten the source content. So if you have more questions, let us know. We purposely kind of made this a little simpler so that everyone can understand and we can share our experiences, and we're seasoned travelers. But for anyone traveling these days, it's not easy. And the bottom line is we're with you on that journey as well. Anyway, take care. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. See you.